All right, let's move on to electrocardiogram. An electrocardiogram, or ECG, also known as an EKG, um, this is a recording of the electrical changes that occur in the myocardium uh, during a cardiac cycle. Oh, if you're wondering where EKG comes from, the K is uh, German spelled cardio with a K. Um, so anyway, body fluids, our body fluids can detect changes in electrical currents, so they put these little pads on you uh, to detect those changes. All right, so this is showing a typical electrocardiogram. So the first wave that we see here is called the P wave, and this is caused by depolarization of the atrial walls. Okay, so remember, depolarization, sodium diffuses in, right? Okay, so that's what's happening there. Now, this corresponds to our atria contracting, all right? So that's going to occur right after that, all right? Next is a QRS complex, so this is a QRS complex. This is caused by a repolarization of the atrial walls, but more importantly, by a depolarization of the ventricular walls, okay? So this big spike there is that depolarization of the ventricular walls. So once again, this corresponds with a contraction of the ventricles and a relaxation of the, of the atria. Once again, that's going to occur right after this wave. That wave is telling us what's happening, though. Okay? And lastly is a T wave. And this is caused by repolarization of the ventricular walls. Remember, repolarization, that's where potassium diffuses out of the cells. Uh, and so this corresponds to ventricular relaxation, which will occur right after that happens. Now, I do want to point out, the how high these waves are are an indication of the number of cells that are doing the same thing at the same time. So when you see this nice sharp spike, you're seeing the ventricles, uh, you know, all those muscle cells in the ventricles contracting all at the same time. That depolarization, so relaxation isn't as smooth as a contraction there. All right, so this is a typical thing. All right, so let's look at non-typical things. So uh, these are arrhythmias. An arrhythmia is an abnormal heart action. An easy abnormal heart actions are where the heart rate increases or decreases. So the first is called bradycardia. That's a slow heart rate. So here you're, uh, uh, you're below 60 beats a minute. So uh, this ha can happen with people during their sleeping, uh, decreases in body temperature, uh, or you can be in really good shape. So that you call it athletic bradycardia. So, you know, uh, your resting heart rate can be below 60 beats a minute. Next is tachycardia, that's a fast heart rate. So this is above 100 beats a minute. So obviously this occurs to, with people during exercise. Uh, this can also occur with a raise in body temperature. Anemia can do this because you're trying to get oxygen out to your body cells. Oh, excitement can do this. Certain medications can do this as well. Uh, next is a uh, fibrillation. And a fibrillation is where parts of the myocardium contract in an uncoordinated fashion, okay? So uh, this is showing a ventricular fibrillation. Here's an atrial fibrillation, right? So what we want to see is this nice, well, you can see it right here, these nice waves that occur. So right here, we're pushing blood down, right? And then we're pushing blood up and out, okay? Uh, so that's what we want to see, uh, the, you know, a lot of cells doing the same thing at the same time. Here, what you're seeing is, right, not a whole lot of cells doing the same thing at the same time. Because as I mentioned, uh, these spikes are indicating the number of cells that are doing the same thing at the same time. We're not getting those here. So this makes the ventricles useless as a pump uh, when it comes here, um, if you have it in the ventr uh, ventricles, the circulation is going to stop. Uh, another thing you can have is a defective SA node. And so if you have a defective SA node, a couple things will happen. One is an ectopic focus. Ectopic just means it's in the wrong place. So this is uh, an abnormal pacemaker takes over the pacing of the heart. And typically that's the AV, no uh, the AV node. And this is what we call a junctional rhythm. So the AV node becomes a pacemaker. But your heart rate is typically going to go down to 40 to 60 beats a minute. And for a lot of people, that's not going to meet their metabolic needs. Uh, another um, uh, arrhythmia is extrasystole. This is a premature contraction occurs before the SA node initiates the next contraction. Um, so uh, here, a small region of the heart becomes hyper excitable, and so this could be due to too much caffeine or nicotine can uh, occur in there. Um, uh, 
Another is a heart block. This is an interference of an impulse getting to or moving through the AV node. So the ventricles uh, start beating at an intrinsic rate, uh, which is at a slower rate. So this is showing the P wave. Uh, there's that QRS complex that is not coordinated anymore. All right, let's take a look at heart sounds. So heart sounds are due to vibrations of heart tissue associated with the closing of the valves. So you can think about these as the lubbed up sounds. So the lub is the first sound, the dup is the second sound. So our heart goes lubbed up, lubbed up, lubbed up. So that lub sound or the first sound is due to the closing of the AV valves. So that's when those close, all right? And the dup sound is due to the closing of the semilunar valve. So those valves there, all right? So all this has to do with the ventricles. So when the ventricles are contracting, those AV nodes are closing. And so when the ventricles finish their contraction, the uh, semilunar valves are gonna close. If you have a heart murmur, that's an abnormal heart sound. This is typically due to incompetent valve. It's kind of the swishing sound there, and that's an indication of backflow. All right, so here the valve doesn't close fully. <clears throat> uh, you know, so when a doctor uh, takes a stethoscope and they put it on your chest, they're listening to a couple things. They listen to your lungs, especially if they're putting it on the backside, but they can also listen to your valves. So they don't, they can just listen to your heart and then they can move around and listen to your valves uh, if they want to. Okay, uh, I don't think I have a picture of this last thing here, but uh, the last thing I'm gonna talk about is cardiac output or CO. This is the amount of blood pumped out by each ventricle in one minute. So it's a product of the heart rate and the stroke volume. So the stroke volume, or SV, is a volume of blood pumped out of the heart by one ventricle with each beat, all right? So if you calculate uh, the cardiac output, uh, you're gonna take the heart rate times the stroke volume. So how much volume is pumped out with each contraction of the ventricle times how many heartbeats there are. So average heart rate is 75, the average stroke volume is 70 milliliters. So if you multiply those together, that's 5,250 milliliters per minute or 5.25 liters per minute. So what that means then is the entire, your entire supply of blood passes through your heart every minute. Now, um, if we increase our heart rate or increase our stroke volume, we're gonna increase our cardiac output. So we have this thing called cardiac reserve. That's the difference between the resting and maximal cardiac output. So if you're non-athletic, uh, the difference is uh, 20 to 25 liters. So you pump out of your heart 25 to 30 liters. If you're non-athletic, or, or if you are athletic, you can get this up to 35 liters. So pumping a lot of blood uh, through your heart.